Hello and welcome. Today, we have interesting stories including one about entitled parents who supported their rapist son and tried to protect him but karma came knocking. Relax sit back and enjoy. First story. My wife, 31 female, has been gaslighting me for months and I, 30 male, knew it. My wife has been gaslighting me. In June of last year, my wife told me a lie. She said she was on her way home after I texted her saying, call me when you can. My wife is going on a walk. Her goal was to get 10k plus steps, and she went on a walk because she only had 1.5k. I sent that text at 11.44 am and she responded at 11.55 am. I'm in a long distance relationship and I'm telling you this because even though it's 11.44 am to me, it's 8.44 pm to her. Earlier that evening, she sent me a link to purchase something, so I went to her contact profile because that's a quick way to look at all links on an iPhone, but right above the links is find my iPhone location services if you are sharing. I see that my wife is at a hotel. I instantly feel uneasy. Being around a hotel at 9 at night is not something she's ever done before, but I swallow my insecurity and continue to work. I checked at midnight, and remember, that's 9 pm for her. 15 extra minutes have passed and I see that she's still at the hotel. Now I'm feeling extra uneasy. I finally log in to find my iPhone, and I see that her phone and watch are at the hotel, and both items are fully charged, remember this, it's key. I see her MacBook and iPad at her apartment so, I take screenshots of both locations to make sure I'm not going crazy. At 12.20 pm, I texted her, how many steps you got? No, response. At 12.28 pm, I notice something funny happening on find my iPhone. Her items are moving quickly like she is in a car. Oh crap, she is in a car. I call her on speakerphone, so I can continue to find my iPhone. Two rings, then voicemail and I call again. Two rings, then a voicemail and I call again. Three rings voice mainland again. Two rings, voicemail. Then no more ringing, only voicemail only after. I call her from 12.29pm to 12.33pm. Her time was 9.29pm to 9.33pm. The entire time I call her, I'm watching her phone icon move quickly from the hotel back to her apartment. I'm taking screenshots of the whole thing. At 12.37 pm, she calls me back while in the apartment and tells me two lies. That her phone was dead, and she walked all the way home but remember, on find my iPhone, it was fully charged. That now leads into the gaslighting. To make this long story less long, I'll make an entire post if you want about what happened after. From that point, June 27th, till December 3rd, I gathered undeniable evidence that everything she told me was a lie and she admitted to it. Now you may wonder how she gaslights me. Well, my wife and I discussed what happened that day a lot. I have a 37 minutes video on my phone of her lying to my face. I had her tell her story about how she got home, and everything about it was a lie. He said a 30 minutes walk, took her 10 minutes because she's a fast walker. She said that her neighbor stopped her outside to talk and that's why she didn't answer the phone, instead of taking the walking path home. She took the driving streets, because it seemed faster, etc. I have text messages her of lying, and videos of her trying to pivot the conversation to me being too hard on her and being mean and she was asking me why I didn't believe her. She tried to make me feel guilty when I didn't want to do certain things because I knew she was lying. She was lying so much, that I found other things I wasn't even looking for that she lied about. I have a YouTube video that I found of her lying about never working out with other men, but I see her on a YouTube video, working out with other men. Like, how do you have a YouTube video with you in it and lie about it? During our engagement, I called her, and she picked up the phone at another man's house, and I didn't know that she was there or who the man was. One time during our engagement, she slept at her boss's house to save money because they had to go out of town the next day, instead of getting a hotel. And I have a preponderance of evidence I had to accumulate over the past eight months because I thought I was going crazy, but it comes to finding out. My gut is correct. She's a effing liar. 
After finding all the undeniable evidence and confronting her, she realized I had caught her in the lie, but I still believe she hasn't told me the full truth. I believe wholeheartedly that my wife cheated. I know with who, but unfortunately, I don't have the evidence for it. So, I made this post because, as a man, no one will talk about the guilt you feel after you have been gaslighted and you've done nothing to deserve this, but somehow your spouse makes it seems like it's your fault. Is it my fault I gathered the evidence after you said I was acting crazy? Most of this journey was not about her. It was me trying to reclaim my trust in myself. I feel like my wife has used my mental health against me, and it's hard to empathize with a person who would do that. When I told her I wanted a divorce, I believe that was the first time she realized that her actions have consequences. Over the past eight months, I tried to create a safe space for her to talk. I tried different tactics that I've read online or from a therapist, and nothing seemed to work. I was constantly being yelled at, disrespected, or lied to. Once I had enough and told her I wanted a divorce, Everything about her personality changed and everything I asked for, she is starting to do now, which is another thing that men don't talk about. It does not make me better that you decide to change all of your habits when you realize we are almost over. Because that means everything I was telling you before, and you told me I was wrong, becomes valid. That means you heard me, and you refused to change, and that, to me, is another form of manipulation. I am losing all feelings I ever had for this woman. It's been eight long months of getting my sanity back, and since I did it alone, I'm okay with being alone. We just had our year anniversary, so to put it into context, she's been lying to me for more than half of our marriage, and I don't know if I want to deal with a consistent liar for the rest of my life. And I'll leave you with this. Two years ago, I was medically discharged from the military because I suffered from bipolar disorder. So as I am trying to navigate this new illness, my wife is gaslighting me. That's something I don't think I'll ever forgive. The top replies, original poster. You are trying to be a world-class detective to show the world that your wife is a cheater and that you need this affirmation to make a decision that is right for you. Can I let you know that no one cares? No one cares if your wife cheated or not. No one cares if she has gaslighted you or told you up is down or black is white. You know she has cheated, yet you are accepting it by looking for some proof. It's about now you should be aware of the phrase, screw that. You are staying with her because you can't face the consequences of her cheating by doing what is right for you. You offer a thousand reasons for why you can't and ignore the ten thousand reasons for you to divorce her. That is your life. It's yours to live how you see fit and if that involves you staying with your cheating, gaslighting wife then so be it. Just don't come here complaining about being stuck in a prison cell whilst you are twirling the door key in your hand. The second reply, make that your ex-wife. I'm exhausted from reading this post and yet original poster is living it. It sounds like it's too late for an annulment, but hopefully, since the marriage was short, and hopefully with no kids, it'll be pretty straightforward. Good luck original poster. Consider getting out of the house y'all share or have her removed if possible, so she can no longer try to manipulate your mind and emotions against you. The original poster replies, I think I'm trapped. I didn't elaborate on this, so let me tell you also, that she threatened self-deletion if we got a divorce. That's why I said I think I'm trapped. The third reply, whatever she does is not your fault, she's manipulating you again. Talk to your therapist. You aren't trapped and if she self-deletes that isn't your fault. She's the entire reason this situation is happening and she's attempting to blame you yet again. She doesn't truly have an ounce of love for you original poster. She's selfish and a lot of other things I can't say in case they ban my account. Edit to add. I've been in a similar situation where an ex threatened to self-delete cause I broke up with them. I told them if you don't care enough about yourself to accept rejection and live then you definitely do not care about or love me so have it it. I let go of my need to save them. Are they dead right now? No and it's been over 15 years. 
Don't let that evil woman manipulate you original poster. You're much stronger than you think. Second story. My brother's a predator, but he's still the golden child. Growing up my parents always gushed at everything my brother did. Meanwhile I was always criticized for not being good enough despite the fact that I tried to do everything right my entire life. I got good grades, I won multiple awards including nationals awards, I got good SAT slash ACT scores, and I got into college with a big scholarship. Nevertheless, my parents rarely told me they were proud of me and my accomplishments were always overshadowed by my brother's athletic achievements. My parents even paid for him to go to private school, while I went to public school, albeit it was a very good public school, and I was able to have a lot of opportunities there, but the fact that they paid for his private high school and never contributed to my college always felt like a stab in the back. Fast forward to my brother going off to college and he ends up committing say asterisk UAL misconduct, I don't want to go into details, which result in him getting kicked out of his college and banned from his sport. During the entire school investigation, my parents stood behind him, hiring lawyers and supporting him unconditionally. I was disgusted with his behavior and refused to talk to him whenever I was home from college. Now that I am out of the house and am working full-time and my brother has transferred to a different school, my parents continue to put him on a pedestal and my mother is constantly begging me to have a relationship with my brother once again. It is impossible for me to forgive my brother because I was a victim in college, and know what it is like to feel scared and helpless in that situation, so asking me to forgive my brother is almost like asking me to forgive the person who attacked me. I don't understand why they continue to support him, especially because he consistently berates my mother and is entitled in every way. Meanwhile, my parents are constantly shaming me for every mistake I make and criticize my romantic partner, even though he makes me happy and I feel supported by him, and he is the only person in my life who is proud of my many accomplishments. I just can't keep living like this, hoping that my parents will realize that my brother is a terrible human being, and finally apologize for treating me like a second-class citizen when I have tried for years to make them proud of me. I just don't know if I can deal with their constant BS anymore. Edit. As I have mentioned in the comments I cannot go no contact with my parents at the moment because they own my car and pay for my insurance. I am planning on cutting them off within the next year or two, once I am in a better financial situation. Right now I am fresh out of college with six figures of student debt. Edit 2. My brother is 21 and I am about to turn 23, so my brother is the baby. The top replies. I know you mentioned that you can't afford to distance yourself from your parents right now because they own your car, but please do as soon as you can. Your mental and emotional well-being are far too important than to be surrounded by people who don't acknowledge you but prefer to acknowledge your abusive, privileged, brother instead. Please find a therapist to help you work through these issues. Find loving and supportive people outside of your relationship with your romantic partner. You can create your chosen family and be surrounded by those who love and support you. In the meantime, make excuses to not see your parents if that's what you gotta do to protect yourself. Tell them you're sick, have a major work project to complete, working OT, have other engagements. Dot etc. You can at least minimize your interactions with them until you are in a place to fully distance yourself from them if that's what you choose to do. You also aren't obligated to have a reel with your brother. It's surprising that there seems to be no empathy for how this reminds you of your attacker. I know this isn't an easy situation to be in, so please take good care of yourself. Do inner child work so you can repair some of the trauma and emotional ramifications of your sibling being favored in the mistreatment you've endured. Learn to re-parent yourself and show up for yourself as the person your younger self needed when you weren't being acknowledged and were made to feel like you weren't enough. Practice self-care regularly. Take nice baths, get a pedicure or a massage, it's way cheaper to go to a beauty school and massage schools, take yourself out to your favorite restaurant every now and then and spend time in nature. Make sure you affirm that you are enough, you are loved, you are important, you are significant, and have so much to offer, because it's true. I hope you thrive and find peace because you deserve it very much.
My sister was favored over me and got extra perks and privileges and it still is painful, so I understand. Give yourself permission to feel. Cry when you need to so you can grieve and process it. Just know that deserve to be loved, acknowledged, and appreciated. I hope all goes well. Please update us if you can in the future. Sending you lots of love. The original poster reply, thank you for your kind words. Luckily, my parents live a decent distance away so I only see them maybe 5 slash 6 times a year. But they are unfortunately visiting this weekend to visit and fix something on my car. I did start therapy in the new year and have been working on dealing with my childhood trauma and relationship with my parents. Sometimes I turn on Bluey and mourn the childhood I never had but wish I did, with two parents who loved me unconditionally. I also started a few new hobbies to fill my time and give me a sense of fulfillment. I am also hopeful to move in with my boyfriend soon, maybe this summer, which would mean I would be able to cut off my parents much sooner.